Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like. Next up, one of my all-time favorite vocalists, Mr. Paul Rogers from Bad Company. Before we get started, guys, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be super cool. Don't forget to ring the bell so I can keep new cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. The course is called how to sing better than anyone else. And you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where we negotiate and discuss how these singers got to their greatness and hopes to help make you great at singing. Now, this is a privilege and an honor to do Paul Rogers because he's such a huge influence in my life. And um, I just wanna play some pieces that I sang uh, because I believe the proof is in the singing, as I've said. Uh, I've also said that Einstein's quote is, uh, demonstration isn't a way to teach, it's the only way to teach. So if you've got some vocal coach on the internet uh, that's not singing and he's telling you that he's gonna make you a great singer but he's not doing it himself and he's not displaying students that do it, and particularly at this level and the style that you wanna learn, he can't teach you how to do it. She can't teach you how to do it. Guys, really, get your brain around this. Would you go to a guitar player that couldn't show you how to do it, but he's gonna mouth it or tell you how awesome he is, how he's the number one guy on the internet? I don't think so. You're gonna go to someone that can actually physically demonstrate it so that you can physically learn as you're going through the process. I teach this in my singing course. With that said, here's Paul Rogers, and uh, we're just gonna dive right in. I'll explain some things as we go. It's called Feel Like Making Love. Baby, when I think about you, I think about love. Darling, wanna live without you and your love. If I So as we go through this now, the first thing is one of the things I love most about Paul Rogers is that someone like Freddie Mercury could come out in an argument, I guess. By the way, I know Freddie was an amazing singer. This isn't taking away anything from Freddie Mercury. It's just a comment that he made uh, when he was in an argument with the band and the band wanted him to sound more like soulful, like Freddie Mercury. And I know that Queen was looking at Bad Company at the time because Bad Company was maybe up here and Queen wasn't quite at the same level. This is true and this is back in the day, this actually happened. So in a conversation with Brian May, he said, hey, for crying out loud, leave me alone. I know Paul Rogers. So someone like Freddie Mercury esteemed Paul Rogers as being better than him, or at least better in the elements and areas that Paul was good at. Freddie, of course, excelled in the areas that he excelled in, of course, amazing. Both in their own right, amazing. Now, I would say for me, Paul Rogers was a much greater influence to me as a singer than Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury, maybe from a melodic standpoint, a creative standpoint, a composition standpoint, a theatrical standpoint, yes, all those things, but from soul and and blues and, and just rock and roll, you know, middle America rock and roll for me, uh, Paul, Paul was my guy. So um, I say that because now Paul uses some very dangerous vocal techniques that he was able to uh, kind of massage over the years and get really good at from a technical standpoint that to this very day, the guy is killing it. He's like 70, 71, or I don't know, he's, he's way up there in his years, I'd have to look it up. But uh, anyway, so let's talk about a singing technique. Now, on lower stuff like this, he'd use a raised laryngeal position. What does that mean? It's kind of a froggy sort of sound, you know? And there's a few people that have used this. A lot of female artists, you know, Rihanna and other people like that use it all the time for female vocals. Um, but for the guys, a lot of the guys that do it, we can get ourselves in trouble. And, uh, you know, Paul Carrick, you know, you remember, tempted by the fruit of another, or in the living years, remember all that? Well, in this case, Paul Rogers does it too, you know, baby, in fact, let me get the key of this again, I'll just back it up, just a skosh. Love, love, darling, don't want to live without you, and your love, a little pitchy, sorry. And if I had those golden dreams of my yesterday, 
I would wrap you in the heavens, right? So he's got this kind of, you know, raised laryngeal position that is really cool and kind of sexy on the bottom. Now listen to what he, what I do, but what he does too. You can listen to AB, A, B this to the original. Check this out. Uh, if I had those golden dreams of my yesterday, I've got to drop the larynx. I've got to open the throat, get open throat technique, and really create space by the uvula and the soft palate rising in the back of my throat to open up that sound, because I can't get a feel like making love. Now, Glenn Hughes somehow has been able to get away with that. Hey, yeah. you know, he's been able to get with that, away with that sound for a long time. It's a pretty dangerous position, because if you don't know how to drop the larynx and get him to a newer or a low, neutral or lowered position, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. They're gonna lock up on you and you're not gonna be able to sing up any higher. So it's cool for tone, it's cool for texture, uh, but it's very difficult to get in and out of that space. So let's continue. in this day, um, there was another really well-known singer called Steve Marriott, and again, he was a huge influence of mine. If you saw, I did a, uh, a What Makes the Singer Great on him, I think it was, or something, I did a vocal demonstration, or uh, you know, talked about him in a, in a video. And, um, you know, I, I remember seeing way, way back in the day when, you know, uh, a PA system had gone out in the forum, and uh, he was in the band Humble Pie, and uh, he broke out with 30 Days in the Hole, and it was, the lights were completely on, the PA was broken, no one knew when the band was gonna come back on, and here's this guy who walks out in blue jeans and a white t-shirt, you know, 30 days in the hole, and he sings this song, I'm like, whoa, who is that? I wanna be that guy, right? And that was like, started, started my fire of wanting to sing like that, and Paul Rogers is in that same ilk. So why I bring up Steve Marriott is because, um, they had this really cool, soulful way about them. It wasn't overdone. It wasn't gratuitous licks. Um, it was just the appropriate licks at the right time. And Paul's even excelled way beyond that even later, where he's just got all this freedom and this good repertoire and toolbox of licks, uh, that staple of you know things to draw from. And so even back here, you know, he had a certain swag about him in his soul that I just love. Now, Lou Graham also has that, you know, uh, you know Mark Farner, different people have done this too. Lots of, you know, Steve Walsh, et cetera. But, but and, and of course, you know, Paul Rogers um, here and then also uh, David Coverdale, you know, all my favorite singers, right? They all have the same kind of thing. But nobody quite like Paul. Paul sort of raised the bar really early on and has maintained that for all of these years since the early 70s, guys. That is a long time and <laughs> we are not worthy. So let's continue. Baby, if I think about you, I think about love. This spot on pitch too, incredible. Darling, if I live without you, I live without love. Is that raised laryngeal position, the sun and moon, it'd be shining on the way, right? So I've got this froggy voice I want to kind of play with, oh, 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 right? So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real cool tone, and like I said, Glenn Hughes uses this a lot, uh, but listen closely again one more time as I go into the chorus, how I can't use that position anymore. Here we go. I would give you both night and day of satisfying. Okay, 
now, I'm gonna put these in the description. I'm not gonna play the full songs of these because I wanna get to the next tune. But I did want to say that um, you can, you know, go into the description, check out and play the full versions and then go to the originals and see how I stack up, right? I mean, really, go check out the original, check out how I did and, and just a B him and, and, you know, give me a grade. I don't care. So next, next tune here is, um, I, I can't believe I don't have more songs in this, but can't get enough of your love. And I like songs like Good Love, you know, if I get you knocking, yeah, pull my door. Like Good Love and Gone Bad and stuff like that. So eventually I'll get around to doing some of those tunes. But here we go. You know this one. Whatever I want And baby, I want you You give me something I need Now tell me I got something for you Come on, come on, come on, do it Come on, come on, do what you do I can't get enough of your love I can't get enough of your love So, you know, well, it's late and I won't love. Love is gonna break me in two. I want you hang me up in your doorway. Oh, oh. Right, there's that, that thing, right? Now, I'm gonna go towards the end because as he goes up again, right, he can't hang on to that sound. So, watch, check this out. Let me back it up. Just go here. Get enough of your love. I can't get enough of your love. I can't get enough of your love I can't get enough of your love I can't get enough of your love I love you so much I can't get enough of your love I love you so much I can't get enough of your love I can't so right, see so here, I'm dropping the lyrics, I'm opening up the throat, and again, I cover all of this stuff in my singing course. So if you guys are interested in this, I show you exactly how I do it, I show you how Paul does it, some of my favorite singers and my favorite influences, so if you like the way I sing, I'll show you how I do it and how, where I got it from. So anyway, gang, I'm doing most of this by um, request, so put in the description who you think I should do vocal takedowns from, and uh, check out my next video.